Hello everyone, Elena Mazana here. Today is December 6, 2021, and today's class is on self-inquiry. It's one of my favorite processes that I use personally myself. I also teach my clients. It's truly profound. I've how did I discover it? I've um kind of hard to pinpoint when I discovered the process because it's just so gradual how it came to me. Um, but I but I can say that I started using it more. So in the last couple of years, uh, particularly, you know, the actual self-inquiry when you ask yourself certain questions. Okay, so what is self-inquiry? Self-inquiry is a method of asking yourself questions for unique insight, self-discovery, or uh, finding solutions to problems, okay? So we can meditate, we can contemplate, we can kind of ponder about things, but if we are extremely focused focused with our question, we can truly tr draw answers from within. The second questions that people usually ask is, where do, do the answers come from? And that's a valid question to ask. And um, of course, we can say it comes from your unconscious mind. You can say it comes from your collect from the collective unconscious, which Carl Jung pointed out and said, collective unconscious is a um, it's it's a memory bank of present, uh, past, and future, and everything else from the, the entire nation and everything else that can be beyond the nation. So basically everything, right? Collective unconscious. This is what archetypes are, and stories are, imagery, and so on and so forth. So we can say that it's 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 very um, you know, creative to think of things uh, that that way. But I want to ask you to actually think about this. Everything we have here. Um, your computer, Zoom, um, you know, the phone, uh, paintings, clothes you wear, you know, maybe certain specific kind of designs, but everything that I did is here, material was once at once invented, right? And then of course replicated and copied and, and you know, redone many, many times when you don't need to be super creative. You just kind of like, a, you know, a machine basically doing the same table over and over and over but if you think about it all of the original things came from the mind so somebody has invented them it comes from from here from here it doesn't just come from 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 here right it comes from the mind from some from a human mind so we are creating things we're solving proper problems where we we really draw incredible insight from our brains it's the brain is incredible right especially if you study if you're an engineer then you can use certain system thinking to create even more but what's even interesting is that you you yourself your brain your cumulative experience life experience everything you hear everything you read um is right there in you in your brain cells basically Okay, it's in those synapses and neuro, neural connections. And if you calm down, if you really calm down, and if you become super focused and ask a really good question, really think through the question, you can ask yourself and you will receive a insight. So you will receive a, a unique solution even, okay? Something that you may not expect. So there are ways to ask those questions. There are, there are there are certain rules that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So, for example, how the third question people ask is how how do I do it? How do I really ask those kind of questions, right? So we got clear on on the, on the second question, right, where the answers come from: unconscious, your mind, your brain cells, your experience, your subjective experience. Okay, so <clears throat> and. Uh, Two type of questions you can ask. Um, first, questions that are, I call them solution-focused questions. So they lead to certain specific solutions that you're looking for, okay? Unique insights um, for the forward momentum. Then there are questions you can ask, um, like self-discovery, these contemplative questions. So the first set of questions, the forward momentum questions are, are, are they usually begin with what, when, how, who, and where, okay? They never start with why. The second set of questions, when it's discovery and contemplation, you can start with why. And the reason I talk about this is it's because in coaching, you know, 
pure coaching is built on the idea of strategic, strategic inquiry. And strategic inquiry is about asking questions. It's, it's, it's a Socratic method. Socrates, a Greek philosopher from thousands and thousands of years ago, he would ask, he would ask questions. They'd ask his students certain questions. He wouldn't just provide knowledge to them. He would just ask questions. He would just keep asking and asking and asking. That's why we call it Socratic method, where he would make them think through things and come up with certain uh, philosophies or certain insights, right? And as you start thinking, you start developing and creating, right? So the, the answers lie within you. And that's that's what Socrates was, was doing. He's, he believed that education lies in um, constant asking uh, the um, inquiry, the, the inquiry, self-inquiry, inquiry method. Uh, so this is the kind of method, inquiry method, method that is used by coaches and you really need to know how to ask those questions in order to really help a client discover a solution or, or a certain kind of um, unique insight for their unique situation, okay? Uh, these questions don't start with why. Why? Because usually in coaching, once you start asking the question, why, why do you think you did this? Then you get a client into the state of sort of problem state for, some, for, for, for a little bit and... Um, and sometimes you can, somebody can get into the state of either self, self-blaming or bl blaming something else, right? So why did you do this? It's like a parent, as if the parent is asking you, why, why, why did this happen? And then the person starts drawing back to the time, why, 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 you all right? So you, you, get them, you, you get them out of solution uh, mode. However, um, there are exclusions. I believe that you can ask yourself those questions in uh, certain unique situations. Um, for example, if you want to ponder about certain events in your life in the past, uh, for as long as you know, this is that this doesn't lead to solutions, but it's more about self-discovery. It's okay to ask and say, why, when I was 25, I, I, I chose this job. What was, what was it about that interest? that it made me want to choose. Maybe you want to understand your choices and why you're interested in certain things, okay? So, uh, or you can ask for self-discovery again. You can ask, why do I have these unique talents? Um, why, right? You can ask that, um, where do they come from? Why did I get interested in that? Because your father was interested or maybe the answer will come because you were exposed to their at an early age or because there's something in it in you that wants to get to know this kind of um, concept, you know, and then you go deeper and deeper, right? So with, with why. Now, if I would like us to really focus on a solution-focused question, which is what, what, where, how, when, and where, okay? These are the kind of questions that will really get you specific kind of answers and they're going to be profound. Okay, it's not just, you know, contemplation. Um, it's, it's really quick and the answers will be coming to you. So you can use meditation. You can use the second question. Uh, the third question people ask is how, how do I get into that state where I can ask these questions? You can use meditation. You can use self-hypnosis. You can go to bed at night and ask yourself these questions. Okay, you can also ask yourself that question out loud, look in the mirror, but also for as long as you're articulating that question. It's important to articulate it, right? So you can hear yourself. But what's most important, guys, is that you are actually designing the question because your answer lies in the design of that question. This is, it's actually quite miraculous, right? The time you spent on designing a question, you're actually designing an answer. Okay, the process is, is as follows. So if you're focusing on these solution-focused uh, questions, then think about the theme. Okay, what's, what interests you? Maybe even a goal. What do I want to ask a question about, right? What's, what is my goal? And what's the, what's the obstacle? So let's see the question, well, the example, for example, if it's about a relationship, right? So really this process makes you want to sit down and contemplate and ask these questions because often we don't even ask them. We'll kind of go with the flow. We will go with what, what the, the programming of the world, with the trends of the world, okay? This process lets you sit, 
it allows you to sit, to sit down and really think things through. You're thinking through your goal. Well, what problem do you have? What do you want to do? Let's say you're you're single. You have to have a relationship. You want to be in a relationship. Okay, that's what you that is your goal. I want to be in a relationship, but I'm not. I'm single. Something stops me. It's because of people. People are a certain way, or or I am a certain way. So we want to leave everybody else out of this, right? We want to focus on ourselves only, only us. So we're not going to ask questions. Um, why is he acting in such such a way? We're not asking questions about the other people. Okay, we're asking questions questions that have everything to do with us. So what do I need to change about myself or my mindset uh, in order to attract a relationship? That's your question. Okay, the theme is relationships. The goal is I want to have a relationship. Something stops. Something has been playing out in a way that I detracted from relationships or they just didn't work out. So something about me, you take responsibility, right? Something about me. What do I need to change about me, about my behavior in order to attract a relationship? Plain and simple, okay? So remember, you ask questions only about yourself. You don't ask questions about others because you can only control yourself. You cannot control other people's behaviors or attitudes. So we can only control ourselves. Now let's say it's a question about your career. Um, I want to get promoted, but something's just like some other people are getting promoted. Um, I see it as something's about me not allowing me to get a promotion. You take responsibility again. You know that there's something needs to be changed. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's the way you speak. Maybe it's the way you approach situations or, or, or approach your boss or maybe something about your style, whatever it is. Um, but the key is you're going to ask, you're going to say, this is a theme, theme career. I want to get a promotion. That's my goal. Something stops me. Something stops me, right? It's not my boss is not promoting me. It's not everybody else is mean and, I, and I'm a victim. No, 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 none of that. And it's not about others. It's always about you. We're leaving other people out of this. Okay. What do I need to change about me and my attitudes in order to get a promotion? That's all. That. What else? Uh, what else? What, 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 would be, what would be the other question? Health, right? The theme could be health. Maybe you are having some sort of pain or some sort of um, malady and you can ask yourself a question um what do i need to change about my myself my lifestyle um where do i need to go where do i need to travel uh where what what uh, right where do i need to go who do i need to be around in order to get better um who where do i need to to to, to be at what place on this planet in order to to heal the such and such uh, problem for example right so just, just focus on that. And always the focus is myself, you, right? So this is self-inquiry. And I want to teach you um, a simple relaxation technique. And this is something you, you maybe already have, you have been learning in, in my uh, self-hypnosis courses. You can use a, um, a simple scan. You can sit down for five minutes and start, scan your body, silently scan your body from from, from, from the top of your head all the way to the tips of your toes and back. Just really calm down five minutes, maybe 10, five to 10 minutes mental scan. You do that and then you gently ask yourself a question. Out loud is great. You can do it internally. I would suggest asking out loud. Um, uh, internally, is, it's fine as well. For as long as you're really, truly hearing your voice and really putting your intention into it, right? And to hearing the question. Remember, the magic in this process is about designing a good question because in it lies your answer already so and always always um focus on i myself what i what can i change about me what do i need to do what do i need to, what do i need to travel what do i need to say um who do i need to approach right so it's always me not someone else how why is he not asking me out that's wrong right because you can ask that question you cannot ask such question or what does he need to change about his attitude we don't know we don't need to know it's there it's their business right we're changing ourselves by changing ourselves we're changing our environment we are growing this is true growth true leveling up so um apologize for any sounds I have a baby in the background who's um uh, leaving right now for a walk so 
Thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. And um, with this, I'm going to end. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Uh, this was self-inquiry method. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.